Uh, folks, I hate to brag, but uh, you are looking at a young divorcee. Thank you so much. Hold your applause. Thank you. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm kind of a hipster about divorce, though. I got divorced in 2019 before it was all the rage. And uh, it's tricky, right? Because as a comic, your whole job is talking about your life. And all of a sudden, my life was changing dramatically. And I had to figure out how to transition from a relatable married comedian to a statistically more relatable divorced comedian. <laughs> had not been part of my plan. This is what I learned, right? When you're going through a divorce, no one knows what to say to you. Like, people try to be nice, but they don't realize how what they're saying is coming off half the time. Like, the number one thing I heard that year was, oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that, but you're a good-looking guy. <laughs> Which is an interesting way to tell someone, hey, just so you know, it wasn't your face that was the problem. It was, uh, it was who you are as a person. <laughs> Could always be worse. People love to tell you it can always be worse. And it's always the same frame of reference, which I find interesting. It's always like, hey, it can always be worse. I mean, think about it. There are people out there who are starving. Also strange to be like, hey, I know you're awfully depressed, but have you considered thinking about famine recently? I'll <laughs> <laughs> lift those spirits right up. It's a cliche, but it is true. It could always be worse. And I say that because I unfortunately know a comedian who is also divorced, except this moron was so confident he would never get a divorce, that he literally used an engagement photo with his wife as the album cover for his comedy album. I know. And the worst part about that is, that comedian is me. Why did I do that? <laughs> Why? That is 100% true. Fun fact about my career, I have one comedy album all about getting married, another coming out soon, all about getting divorced. <laughs> I like to think of myself as stand-up comedy's Casey Musgraves. <laughs> it's a niche joke, but it's very good if you get it. <laughs> during, during what I can only describe as the most cartoonishly depressing part of that year, I was at one point kicked out of my nice apartment with my wife and dog and was sleeping on the floor of an already shared one-bedroom apartment where the other two residents were, I swear to God, a magician and a 64-year-old Indian man who looked... Strikingly like my dad, <laughs> like, weirdly like my dad. Uh, for a little context, if you're curious about my particular brand of beige, let me go ahead and clear that up for you. Yeah. I know there's a lot of questions. Uh, biracial, my dad is from India, and my mom is a tiny white lady from Wisconsin, which uh, apparently results in a Mexican man. <laughs> it was very surreal living with this guy, because he looked so much like my dad that in some ways it was actually kind of comforting. Like, it felt like my dad was with me in spirit, supporting me through this horrible time in my life. But on the other hand, this dude was also divorced and worked in the complaint department at LaGuardia Airport. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a big part of me is like, is this just me from the future trying to warn myself? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever shared a fridge with your destiny, but it is jarring. I did at one point have to move back in with my actual parents. And the toughest part about that was they were too supportive of me. Here's what I mean by that. At one point while I was living with them, I, for some reason, agreed to do a podcast interview ostensibly about my life falling apart. And during this interview, the host asked me what the hardest part about moving back in with my parents was. And my answer was, I remember when I was a teenager, the only thing that got me through the day half the time was knowing that my parents would inevitably leave the house at some point and I would have some time alone. And now I feel pathetic as this man in his 30s going through a divorce, living with his parents again, just praying that they go for a walk once a week. <laughs> Harmless enough. But unbeknownst to me, my loving, supportive, concerned parents downloaded that podcast episode <laughs> and listened to it. And this only became clear to me a couple weeks later when I was sitting in my childhood bedroom and heard my mom very dramatically yell up the stairs, we just wanted to let you know that we are going out for a walk now. <laughs> we, we will be gone for between 20 and 30 minutes. <laughs> you might have longer, but you'll have at least 20 minutes. And in that moment, sitting alone in my childhood bedroom in suburban New Jersey, I realized that it could, in fact, always be worse. Uh, 